Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will learn about op-amp as an inverting amplifier. The topics covered in this video are what is an amplifier, op-amp with negative feedback, op-amp as an inverting amplifier, concept of virtual ground, voltage gain of inverting amplifier, input and output impedance of inverting amplifier. We will also discuss some examples on inverting amplifier. What is an amplifier? An amplifier increases the level of its input signal. It may be voltage, power or current. If A is the voltage gain of an amplifier, then output voltage V out is equal to A or gain into input voltage V in. From this formula, one thing we can observe that there must be a linearity or linear response between amplifier's input and output. Suppose an op-amp has power supply of plus or minus 15 volt and open loop gain is 20,000. The supply voltage determines the limits or saturation voltage of op-amp. Here saturation voltage plus or minus Vsat is equal to plus or minus 15 volt with plus or minus 2 volt. That gives plus or minus 13 volt as saturation or limit of this op-amp. As we know V out or V saturation is equal to Open loop voltage gain AOL multiplied by input voltage V in. Here we know saturation voltage and gain. We have to find out V in. So our formula for V in is equal to V saturation divided by open loop voltage gain. That is equal to 13 volt divided by 20,000. That gives 650 micro volt. If our input voltage exceeds 650 micro volt, then our op-amp will driven into saturation and will becomes non-linear. This limit of 650 microvolt at op-amp's input is very small or negligible. So our linear region will also becomes very small or negligible. So to control this high open loop voltage gain or to increase this linear region, op-amp is almost always operated with negative feedback. That is a part of the output fed back in phase opposition to the input. With negative feedback, the closed loop voltage gain ACL can be reduced and controlled so that op-amp can function as linear amplifier. In addition to this, negative feedback also provides for control of input and output impedances and amplifier's bandwidth. An op-amp can be operated as an inverting amplifier as shown in figure. An input signal V in is applied through input resistor R in to inverting terminal. The output is fed back to the inverting input through feedback resistor RF. The non-inverting input is grounded. The feedback resistor RF provides negative feedback. Since the input is applied at inverting terminal, the output will be inverted that is 180 degrees out of phase as compared to the input. Hence the name inverting amplifier. Concept of virtual ground. It is applicable when we are providing negative feedback. As we know, op-amp has infinity input impedance. According to Ohm's law, I is equal to V by R. Here, R is infinity. So, I is equal to V by infinity. This means zero current at the inverting input R at point A. As V is equal to I into R, so there is also zero voltage at point A. Then there is no voltage drop between inverting and non-inverting inputs or V plus is equal to V minus that is equal to zero. This means that voltage at inverting input at point A is zero because the non-inverting input is grounded. The zero volt at inverting input at point A is referred to as virtual ground because it is at zero volt but not physically connected to the ground. Now we will observe the voltage gain of inverting amplifier. The current I is equal to 0 at point A or inverting input. Therefore, current I in flowing through R in entirely flows through feedback resistor RF. In other words, we can say IF is equal to I in. Now we will calculate the I in. I in is equal to V in divided by R in. That is equal to voltage across R in divided by R in. That means V in minus voltage across point A divided by R in. V in minus voltage across point A is 0. So V in minus 0 divided by R in. That comes V in by R in. That means I in is equal to V in 
divided by Rm and IF is equal to VF by Rm. That means voltage across RF divided by RF. This means voltage at point A minus V out divided by RF. As we know voltage at point A is 0. So 0 minus V out divided by RF that is equal to minus V out by RF. So we get IF as minus V out by RF. Since feedback current IF is equal to input current IN, both these equations are equal. That means minus V out by RF is equal to V in by R in. Therefore, we can write closed loop voltage gain ACL is equal to V out by V in that is equal to minus RF by R in. Here, the negative sign indicates that output signal is inverted as compared to the input signal. So the closed loop voltage gain ACL of an inverting amplifier is the ratio of feedback resistance RF to the input resistance RN. If the feedback resistance value and input resistance value is equal or RF is equal to RN, then closed loop voltage gain ACL is equal to minus RF by RN that gives minus 1. So the op-amp circuit provides unity voltage gain with 180 degrees phase inversion. If RF value is equal to 10 kilo ohm, RN is equal to 1 kilo ohm, then ACL becomes minus RF by RN that is equal to minus 10. So the op-amp circuit provides output voltage exactly equal to V in multiplied by gain 10 along with 180 degrees phase inversion from the input signal. If you select the precise values for RF and RN, we can obtain a wide range of voltage gains. Thus, inverting amplifier provides constant voltage gain. Now, we will have a brief discussion about the input and output impedance of inverting amplifiers. Ideal OPAM has extremely high or infinity input impedance and very low or zero output impedance. But RN is always less than infinity. The input voltage passing through input resistance RN that is going to virtual ground. That's why the input impedance for the inverting amplifier Zin is equal to Rn. The value of Rn will always be much lower than input impedance of the op-amp. Therefore, the overall input impedance of an inverting amplifier will be much lower than the op-amp's input impedance. The output impedance of an inverting amplifier Zout is the parallel combination of feedback resistor RF and the output impedance of op-amp itself. The presence of the negative feedback reduces the output impedance of the amplifier to a value that is less than the output impedance of op-amp. Let's solve some problems on inverting amplifier. For the circuit shown in the figure, find out closed loop voltage gain ACL, input impedance of the circuit and the peak output voltage of the circuit. The formula for the closed loop voltage gain ACL is equal to minus RF by RN. Here RF is equal to 100 kilo ohm divided by RN is equal to 10 kilo ohm. That gives ACL is minus 10. The input impedance Zin of the circuit is equal to RN that is equal to 10 kilo ohm. The peak output voltage V out is equal to closed loop voltage gain ACL multiplied by input voltage V in. Here closed loop voltage gain is minus 10 into input voltage 1 volt peak to peak. That gives 10 volt peak to peak output voltage. Therefore, the peak output voltage VPK is equal to 10 by 2 that gives 5 volts peak output voltage. The output waveform appears like this from plus 5 volt to minus 5 volt with 180 degrees phase inversion. Find out the peak output voltage for the given circuit. First, we have to find closed loop voltage gain ACL that is equal to minus RF by RN. Let's insert the given values in the formula. Minus 40 kilo ohm feedback resistance divided by 1 kilo ohm input resistance that gives minus 40 as voltage gain. V out is equal to ACL into V in. Here closed loop voltage gain ACL is minus 40 into input voltage 1 volt peak to peak. That gives V out value as 40 volt peak to peak. Therefore, the peak output voltage VPK is equal to 40 divided by 2 that gives 20 volt peak output voltage. But since the supply voltage is plus or minus 15 volt, so the saturation voltage Vsat is equal to plus or minus 15 volt with plus or minus 2 volt. 
that gives plus or minus 13 volt as saturation voltage. Here the output voltage 20 volt peak far exceeds the saturation voltage level of plus or minus 13 volt. So the op amp will be driven to deep saturation and it will behave as non-linear amplifier. This means that the output signal will not have the same shape as the input signal. The output waveform will clip at the saturation voltage of plus or minus 13 volt. Note that 180 degrees phase inversion does occur. Find out the closed loop voltage gain for the inverting amplifier shown in figure. If source impedance R source is equal to 0 ohms and R source is equal to 1 kilo ohm. When R source is equal to 0 ohm, then the closed loop voltage gain ACL is equal to minus RF by R in. 100 kilo ohm feedback resistance divided by 1 kilo ohm input resistance. That gives voltage gain as minus 100. When R source value is 1 kilo ohm, then closed loop voltage gain ACL is equal to minus RF by R source plus R in. That is equal to minus 100 kilo ohm divided by 1 kilo ohm source impedance plus 1 kilo ohm input resistance. That gives minus 50 as voltage gain. Note that we have lost half of the voltage gain because of source impedance. That's all about open as inverting amplifier and its voltage gain calculations. So if you have any doubts or suggestions, please mention them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video. If you have learned from this video, please click the like button. Help others to learn by sharing this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and turn on notifications for more such videos. Follow me on my next video, OPAM as non-inverting amplifier. Have a nice day.